Alrighty, welcome to section 11.3, Simplifying Rational Expressions. This one is going to be pretty quick and painless, just uh, one a slide full of problem-solving tips and vocab, and then examples. So we'll jump right to it. What is an irrational expression? A rational expression is any algebraic fraction with pol polynomials in the numerator and denominator. So the easy way to remember this is the word rational has the word ratio inside of it. And we already learned about rational numbers. Remember, a rational number um, was a ratio of two integers, so a rational expression is going to be a ratio of two polynomials. So we can say like px is a polynomial in the numerator and r of x is a polynomial in the denominator. And so these two polynomials can be complicated or they can be very simple. So <coughs> some problem solving tips when you're trying to simplify polynomials is number one, simplify rational expressions by factoring and canceling common factors. So for example, if I had um, 28 divided by 14, we all know that this reduces to just equaling 2, but the reason we can do that is because we can factor the 28 as 14 times 2, and we can factor the denominator as 14 times 1, and then we cancel out this common fact that they both have in common, leaving us with just 2. The same is true, even though the polynomials are going to be more complicated than just a number, you still want to factor that polynomial as much as possible, and then if there's something they have in common, you can cancel it out. <coughs> Sometimes you need to factor out a minus sign to make the terms cancel. So in the numerator you might have 5 minus x, and in the denominator you might have x minus 5. Well those are technically not identical, let's put parentheses around them. They're not identical, but if you factor a negative sign out of the numerator, you get negative of negative 5 plus x over x minus 5. And now this part in parentheses, x plus a negative 5 is the same as x minus 5. These two cancel and the answer is just negative 1. So if you have um, terms that are just off by a minus sign, you can factor out a minus sign and then cancel them out. Things to remember, the zeros of a fraction occur when the numerator is equal to 0. So if, if the problem says find all the zeros of this rational expression, the zeros is when you set a fraction, which is a number uh, in the top divided by a number in the bottom, if you set that equal to zero, only if the top number equals zero. So if you set this equal to zero, uh, it's the top that you want to look at equaling zero. However, for vertical asymptotes, these are excluded values. That would be the denominator or bottom number or bottom polynomial that you would set to zero. All right, let's do some examples. State the excluded values. Again, very easy to state the excluded values. So you're just looking where the denominator is 0. So for this one, p cannot equal 7. For this one, you need to factor it. So k squared minus 4, you should recognize that as a difference of squared. Difference of squares, so k plus 2 times k minus 2. Okay, and in the numerator you have k plus 2. Okay, so this k plus 2 here and this k plus 2 will cancel, and so your final answer is 1 over k minus 2. However, k cannot equal 2 because of this, but k can also not equal negative 2 uh, because of this one. Even though it canceled out, it's in the original problem, and therefore you cannot plug this number into the original problem. So you have two things that are restricted in the domain, two excluded values, and then this is your simplified answer. Let's try one more here. This, both the numerator and the denominator are going to need to be factored. So the numerator is going to be y plus 3, lots of parentheses in these problems, times y minus 3, because that was a difference of squares. In the denominator, you look for two things that multiply to negative 18 and add up to positive 3. That's going to give you a y plus 6 and a y minus 3. Again, these are going to cancel out, but in terms of your excluded values, y cannot equal, from the first term right here, it cannot equal negative 6, and y cannot equal, from this term right here, it cannot equal 3. So these are your two excluded values. Once you cancel those out, then your reduced simplified answer is just y plus 3 over y plus 6. So this is a bit of simplifying and finding excluded values. Simplify each expression, state the excluded values. So again, simplifying. Now, if it's just a monomial over a monomial, we're going right back to exponent rules. So 21 over 28 reduces to what? That's going to be, they both have a 7 in them, so we can reduce that to 3 fourths. The b divided by b cancels out, and the c over c squared leaves a c 
by itself in the denominator. So just 3 over 4c. But it's that same idea where you factor and cancel whatever is in common. Uh, let's try one more here. 12 over 24 reduces to 1 half. m squared over m is going to put an m in the numerator. And r over r cubed, that means the bottom wins by 2. So we're going to have an r squared in the denominator. So 1m over 2r squared. So if they're just monomials, simplify using your exponent rules. Um, let's try this one here. Simplify and cancel. Oh, what are the excluded values? I almost forgot. Excluded values here. B cannot equal 0 because there's a B in the denominator, and C cannot equal 0. How about over here? M cannot equal 0, and R cannot equal 0 because they're in the denominator. So any variable that shows up in the denominator can't equal 0. Um, if it shows up as part of an expression, like for example here, we simplify this. We've got n plus 6 in the numerator. We factor a 3 out of the denominator, leaving behind n plus 6. So the n variable is in the denominator, but it's not by itself. So what value of n makes this denominator equal to 0? Well, of course, n cannot equal negative 6. And then when we simplify it, these cancel completely. And so our answer is actually just 1 third. Okay. So if you plug in negative 6 to this expression, you divide by 0 and you get an error. If you plug any number in the entire world into this expression, you will get out one-third. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's probably enough for right now. You get the idea. You want to factor and cancel the numerator. Then you want to see what excluded values there are by looking into the denominator. Um, that's it for this section. So enjoy the easiness of it all, and I'll see you in class.